Welcome back to Next Level Rides. In today's episode, we're gonna be showing you how to connect the paddle shifters to your 8HP or your CAN TCU after you've done a swap. As you can see, we've already put the LCI paddles into our E82, so 135i. After we did the 8HP swap, the paddles do not work, and initially they were um, ground-based. So what I always wanted was the LCI paddles. So I'll insert a clip and a bit of an excerpt or whatever as to uh, how to remove the steering wheel, how to remove the airbag, and to confirm if you have resistance-based or ground-based paddles. Now these specifically, we did convert from resistance-based to ground-based. So these ones should be a lot better and we will end up showing you when we cut to Taylor on uh, how to connect it to the CAN TCU. When we went to remove the airbag from the steering wheel, we just ended up using a number two Robertson. I find this ends up working the best only because it ends up pushing against the spring and it doesn't slip off. It's gonna take some time, so be patient. And once the airbag ends up coming out, use a pick or something to pick up these clips on the back of the airbag. And if you haven't already, unlike Taylor, make sure you disconnect the battery. Once these are disconnected, it's relatively straightforward. Just use the pick to actually pick out the additional connectors. Now, because I have fat fingers, it was difficult, but with a pick, it made quick work of it. Once those are all out of the way, you're gonna take your trusty Milwaukee Impact and the 16 mil, blast the nut right through the center and off it goes. With the steering wheel on the bench, you're gonna be left with these, I believe, three T20 Torx bits. Now the reason you're gonna be wanting to loosen these is to actually get the surround off of the front face of the steering wheel. This needs to be removed so that you can reach the two bolts that are holding the paddles in their appropriate locations. Once you end up taking your pick Pick out all the harness, make sure that it's out and out of the way so that you're not gonna rip a wire because these are pretty small gauge wiring. And then take the center trim, lift it up, and you'll actually see what's required to remove them from the trim itself. There's probably a proper name for it. I can't remember it. So end up using this V-brace thing and yeah, we'll go with that. Pull the connectors for each paddle out of the V-brace, pull it out of the V-brace itself, and then slowly pick them out from the back of the steering wheel. When you pick it out, don't apply too much pressure. It's really easy to snap or rip the connectors off and that would be a bigger headache down the road. Two of the paddles I had laying around that I thought would work are a little bit different. As you can see, the blue connector is a two wire. So this is typically your LCI paddle and the one that came out is a three wire. Now the reason it has three wires is because these are push pull paddles. Now the one I have here, as you can see, it does end up having the appropriate connector, but we do need to disassemble it to do the resistance mod so that it will be a ground-based paddle. Pick the harness out and around through these little tabs here, and once you end up pulling the base plate off, just put it aside because you don't want to lose these. From here, there's going to be a plastic pin that's going to be connecting the two together. There's going to be a large side and a small side, so we just take a pick we push on the small side and pick it out and through. Now when you take it apart, you need to be a little bit careful because there is a spring and some plastic items that you do not want to break because you cannot find these in another paddle or purchase them for, through BMW. Now one of the things to keep in mind is this little rubber piece that I'm picking off here. Some of them have metal portions inside of it and some don't. Here, as the camera is eventually gonna focus, these are the resistors that we need to deal with. Now. For me, I tried quite a few times to warm up the bit of solder and pick them out. Eventually, it I, I gave up. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I, I ended up giving up, so we just ended up picking or breaking them off. But once they are off and out of the way, what you can do with your soldering iron is just tin where the wire is going to need to go and chuck the resistors to the side. After you pick out the resistors, all you really need to do is take a little bit of mechanics wire and ground the two tabs. Now the two tabs or the two topmost tabs are the ones that we're going to deal with. So I'm just going to try and take a little bit of solder and pre-tin the terminals for the mechanics wire so that it's a little bit easier to work with. For this, all you really need is just a little bit of mechanics wire. So cut yourself a little slip of it. Now sometimes it can help a little bit better if you use little pliers to hold it into place as you end up tinning it. Make sure that your soldering iron ends up having a little bit of solder on it and that the actual connector is tinned. Now here it was a little bit long, so I just went in there with pliers, trimmed it off, and then I'm gonna go in with the soldering iron to actually push it down so that it properly solders. 
Now once it's all said, cured, cooled, whatever you end up wanting to say, just make sure that with the pick you end up giving it a couple of pokes to make sure that it's a solid connection. For here, if you have a trusty multimeter, all I want to do is check the continuity between the soldered connection and you'll end up seeing if you look close enough, one will be a positive track and one will be a negative track. Now when you end up depressing the paddles, it will end up grounding on these two gold rings to the left side. As we're working on the positive side, the one thing to keep in mind is this one, just follow the actual way that I'm holding it. You're gonna ground the top upper wire and once done so, just reassemble it as it came apart. When you go to click the shell back in, just make sure that the spring is where it needs to be. Sometimes there's a little locating nub that's going to help you into closing it. Just end up putting the two hooks on the one side Clip it together, ensure that it's clicking appropriately, and then put the slide pin back into place. One thing I ended up making a mistake with is with the factory pre-LCI push-pull paddles, I ended up pulling both of them and we ended up being a bit confused as I ended up wiring it both for pull. Now pull is going to end up being shift up for both, so you just need to reverse the wires. But of course I'm going to end up leaving a picture here just to show you what I had to do. So with the Canon TCU, you can either have two styles. You can have analog or digital, analog being it's voltage based, uh, digital being it's ground based. So the easiest method and the easiest place to get to to run the wires is from a JBE module. It's a little module right down here that sits under the glove box. You're gonna have a blue connector as well as a black connector. On the blue connector, we have pins. This is having a seizure. We have pins. 22 and 38. Sometimes they're already pinned, sometimes they're not. In our case, it was already pinned, so I just removed those pins and labeled them. And uh, that way, if we ever had to go back or trace steps, so there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this little harness that we made. So two that go to the CAN TCU and then two factory, I think they're called MQS or whatever may be connectors. These will plug into pin 22, pin 38, run up to where we're gonna mount the CAN TCU, and then we will find where we need to put them in based off of the pinout for the back of the connector. So for the little harness, we have the spare connectors that are sent by Ken in case you need to add di different uh, stuff. And then we just have two factor BMW connectors. So you can find these off of wires that you would have taken out from your shifter, for example or go buy new ones if you don't feel like cutting up a, a harness. We actually, we have a whole harness here that's been deep pinned in case we need spares. And then that's all it is, just something very simple. This will run down, in through behind to those connectors, and then these will just plug right into the CAN TCU side. So just a little short one because we've uh, decided to mount this behind the club box. So in the getting started PDF that Ken has, it'll tell you exactly based off of what car you have and what kind of paddles that you have what pins you need to either depin or add pins into. Very specific, most E6X chassis and E7X chassis, it'll be to the shifter. Most E8 and E9 chassis are gonna be pins 22 and 38. Uh, but that'll be in the getting started PDF file that is on the Wikipedia. So we're gonna quickly connect these button it up a little bit, clean it up a little bit, and then I'll show you what, what you have to do on the CAN TCU side with the computer. All right, so on the CAN TCU, because they're analog input paddles, meaning there is a resistance difference when you put the two paddles together, we put it on a analog input one. So we used C2 in the CAN TCU, which is a five volt, su five volt supply, and then we used B2, which is analog input one. I'll put the diagram up for you, as well as we'll put the link to the CANformance wiki, uh, where that's all written down. Once you're in CAN, CAN TCU, you'll go to shift paddles, you'll hit set up. So for base level, we're gonna have no paddle selected. And you'll be able to see it's 4.5, <clears throat> volts or 4520 put the ignition on i'll hold the paddle up we'll get 4820 and then if tody holds the paddle down we'll get 4920 which gives us a hundred difference tolerance we're going to keep at 40 and we'll fine tune it if we need be it's always kind of recommended to do it with the vehicle running in case you have any voltage differences but uh, that's more or less how you set it up 
and we have a full battery. And a full battery. And that's it. So now if Tony hits paddle up, you'll be able to see that we're getting a one. And then if he pulls paddle down, under paddle down, you'll be able to see we get one, meaning it's getting the voltage. Here, let's play a game. Ready? W tell me which one I'm pulling. Paddle up. Wait, what? <laughs> that's okay, it. No, let's actually play. Okay. Let's, ready? Yeah. Guess who? Pedal down. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate him. <laughs> so now that we have everything that uh, we foresee in the future needing to be needing to be wired in, we're going to clean this up, mount it behind the glove box in its final home, run the USB cable up front so it's easy in case we need a data log or anything like that, and kind of just tidy up. If you run into any issues, comment down below. We'll try to help as best as we can. I, I guess we should uh, also include did Taylor do okay? If he did, let us know in the comments as well. If he didn't, he'll be fired. Wouldn't That's that be, all for today. Shut up, Taylor. Wouldn't that be Feel a Feel free promotion? to like and subscribe. Still shut up, Taylor. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, have a good time. Bye, have a good time. Hold on, I'm gonna burp. <laughs>